Hello there, thank you for staying with us and welcome to another edition of Channel's Beam. I'm Victor Mathias. Now, with the 2023 elections coming closer, the two main political parties in the country and the others, too, have been gearing up for the challenge ahead as they seek to sweep the elective positions during the elections. However, issues surrounding how the parties will pick those who will fly their flags at the coming polls have been a conversation that has been on the front burner. With the main Opposition PDP having presidential candidates from the North, the South and the East and the ruling All Progressives Congress going for consensus candidates at their national convention, the die seems to have been cast. Now on this edition of the program, we will look at what Nigerians are looking out for when the time comes. Will the unofficial zoning take precedence or competence, capacity and character be the order of the day? We'll get answers to all of those questions, but before we do that, let's uh, look at what was trending in the social media in the past week. Mother's Day is a celebration honoring the matriarch of a family or individual, as well as motherhood, maternal bonds, and the influence of mothers in society. It is celebrated on different days in many parts of the world, most commonly in the months of March or May. Nigeria's ruling All Progressives Congress held its national convention where 54 new officials to be led by the former governor of Nasarawa State, Adamu Abdullahi, were selected after a consensus was reached by other contestants of various positions. Nigerians and some party faithful questioned the rationale between such as some claimed their hands were forced to concede. And the Oscars was marred by a mild drama after Will Smith didn't take lightly a joke by stand-up comedian Chris Rock over his wife's looks. Smith walked to the stage and smacks the comedian who later describes the incident the greatest show on live television. Well, there you go. Those were the trends in the past week. But joining us to look at today's topic, we have with us Isaac Abraham Mia, who has weighed in on tropical issues nationally and globally. He is an engineer by training. He supports the Not Too Young to Run movement and is looking forward to what 2023 will present. We also have Abraham Mesri Jigu, ESQ. He is a Lagos-based senior lawyer and a senior partner with LP Partners, a law firm based in Lagos. He's also a politician who have been in the forefront for good governance, respect for human rights, and upholding principles of rule of law. He hails from Delta State. It's a pleasure to have you both uh, join us today on the program. Thank you for having Of course. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have with us, uh, joining us via Zoom from Lagos, Michael Abimboe. He is a senior editor with Opera News Nigeria. Um, it's a pleasure to have you on the program as well, Michael. Thanks for having me, Victor. Indeed. Well, so it kicks out the conversation for us, uh, Michael. A lot has happened in the past week. I mean, it's been an interesting week, so to speak. Um, but uh, what will you be looking for? Or what will you be looking out for when the time comes? Would you be looking out for, uh, would you take the zoning, the, which is unofficial, of course, or would you be looking for competence, character, and capacity? Well, for, for 2023 presidential election, it differs for the both parties. For APC, they don't have the choice other than to zone to the south. While for the PDP, they are in Delhi, my dad to leave it open or zone to the southeast or the south, as Southern Governments Forum has um, demanded. Mm -hmm. So, but generally, I think what Nigerians want now in 2023 is someone who can unify the nation, who can place the nation back in the right place because of the economy, security, and infrastructure. Those are the three main issues where Nigerians want that. I mean, you can you to look at the in past couple of weeks now, people are cleaning up for fuel. The, the, the electricity is going bad by the day. So the, those are the issues people don't want to occur in 2020. Not that in this type of era and they're experiencing um, old issues like insecurity, bad, um, bad electricity supply. So in 2023, Nigerians are looking for people 
who are experienced and who can fix the nation, basically. And as regards zoning, I think it, it, it boils down to the party. For PDP, it, it, I think they just have to leave it open. They, they can't afford to zone to either the southeast or the south. Because if you zone to the southeast, it's an easy ride for the APC. If you, if you zone, if, if, if you leave it open, it means your best candidate emerges through the delegate election, and that can give the APC a ride for their money. But if you zone it down to the southeast, I mean, if, for example, someone like Bola Tinobu gets a ticket in the APC, I, I'm not sure there's any, kind, any candidate from the southeast that can match Mr. Tinobu's popularity. So that's, that's basically it for me. Well, well, that's uh, you know political conjecture, and of course, only at the polls uh, can we confirm whether or not you know that is uh, true or not. But I'll just hold you there for a bit, and I'll come back to you again, you know, to take you up on some of the things that you said. Um, but uh, Abraham, let me get you, you know, to weigh in on some of the things he said. You know, talking about you know, what is good for a political party and what might not be good for the other. I mean, we know we know the saying that what is good for the geese is also good for the gander. In this in this scenario where we are right now. Uh, like you said, we want some, or Nigerians will want someone who would unify, who would, you know, take care of all the myriad of problems that we're having right now. But what would you be looking out for, you know, in, in all of this? Competence. <clears throat> uh, I'll be looking out for competence. Uh, a lot has been said about zoning. Uh, as an individual, I don't see a problem with zoning, especially for a country with so much. Uh, uh, tribe and nationalities all entrapped, contrapped into one nation, uh, you would uh, find a space for zoning. But what should be uppermost is wherever it is zoned to should uh, produce the best. We should all be looking at for is the person being put forward or being elected, being nominated or being a consensus candidate, is it competent? Can he do the job? I mean, we all have our history, and uh, you know, if you're gonna get a job, you people will do a background check on you. So do a, his, yeah, look, look, at your CV yeah, look a background check of the person. What has he achieved? What has he done? What are his successes he has achieved in his life? And uh, what are his track records? Uh, is he competent? Can he hold? Can he, can, is he young? That's, that's another thing. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> because, because, <laughs> because we, we, we now have a problem with people saying, oh, because I'm old, <laughs> I, I can no longer um, catch up or meet up with the demands of the office because I don't longer have the strength of a young man. So we should have a cap, an age cap, where we should also do is not, uh, I think it's constitutional. No, no. Yeah, there's a certain age. age. I don't think there's no, a certain age. Okay. Well, there's a there's certain, no there's a certain age to come in. To, you, the certain age you need to be before, before you, you can be. Yeah, yeah. Position, I think there yeah. should also be a certain age you need to be, and you can no longer aspire to become president of Nigeria. <laughs> uh, so age plays an important role. Competence plays an important role. Mm. Where you come from really does not play an important role. You are the, uh, I mean, it's good you brought the, the age thing into, you know, into the mix. Yeah. You, like you said, you know, you are, you know, an advocate for the not too young to run movement. And, oh, you know, it's pretty much uh, catching up, you know, it's catching fire in every aspect of our lives, you know, and all of that. But as they say, you know, youth is not a, is not a, it's not like a, it's not a, is that a one-way ticket to, to That's competence? True. Yeah. You know, so in this instance now, uh, we have young people, you know, out there that you know are vying for positions, positions that will buy yeah. position. You know, what should we be looking out for? What should they? What should be their main focus before, apart from being a youth? You know, of course, before vying for these positions. Well, um, I think being a youth comes with an advantage. It's just, uh, I think, more of the agility and the. Uh, readiness or the eagerness that we have as youth to vie for this position. So coming back to what the parties are doing right now, I understand and from the look of things, there is no much of youth participation from uh, what the APC just did uh, yesterday, day before yesterday. And the candidates, the opposition party have been filled in. I think the youngest among them is... Uh, Okay, they have the young guys relatively. We have the Peter Obi, we have uh, Tambual, then uh, the uh, Wiki just declared so that he's interested in running. But at the end of the at the core of this whole thing is the youth, do they understand these basics that is happening right now? Because everybody is making alliances now, tables are being crossed, hands are being shaked across borders, and um, I think every party wants to field in the best candidates. But where are we as youth coming 
or where is our place? Because at the end of the day, not politics to is not the something. Have a large number. Yes, we have a large number, but politics is not uh, something that will be given to you. Now, uh, you want a seat on the table, you have to fight for it, and you have to prove that you actually deserve that seat on that table because there's a difference between getting the table and remaining there. And uh, there are a lot of intricacies. There are a lot of um, cross carpetings. I don't mean crossing parties and all that, but there are a lot of alliances to be made, a lot of um, negotiations, son of, this, a sort of, a son of, a sort of a memorandum of understanding that the youths are supposed to come up with as we're well. going towards 2023. The old guys don't want to give us a seat. But then we also have to, what is it that they have or they know that we don't know? Because except and when we know those things, we're really not ready to uh, get what we are speaking about. So, I mean, you know, in, in trying to get what it is, you know, the young people want, I, I, I always advocate for this intergenerational collaboration, so yes, to speak, yes. where you have the young people, you know, and the older generation trying to yeah. come together to understand or to come to terms with, you know, whatever the difference is and, you know, make that collaboration or consensus or MOU or yeah. agreement yeah. or a gentleman statement, it's you know, you yes. know to, to do that. What's the possibility of that happening? Now, you can't take away the wisdom of the old when you want to achieve something. No matter how uh, agile, how intelligent you think you are, to aspire for something, there must be someone that has done it before or knows certain places that the bodies are buried. You need the old wisdom, and even if it's not really bowing the knees, you need to consult and know, okay, this is what can get you there, and this is not what gets you there. But what most of these old men seem to fail to understand is you no longer have that vision that we are having now, albeit they think we're first uh, short-sighted, but they have a perspective they are looking at it. We are the ones living in this age right now. We're the ones that are facing and we're the ones that are facing the challenges as it were. Most of them have lived their lives and they are borrowing in our own time. So what I will suggest or what I always have been looking forward to is, okay, young men, this is your time, this is your age. Come and learn a thing or two from me. Now that's taking me to mentor, mentorship. Mentoring. Now, mentor, pick two or three. Anyone that you feel has is running with your vision. Mentor them on the path that you think as the elder. Then it's not even a matter of godfatherism now because that would take us to where godfatherism comes in when you get into the office you want to do uh, the biddings of the person that mentored you or showed you the way seemingly yeah. but at the end of the day we still need their wisdom but they need our energy they need to see things from our perspective <laughs> you know so see, speaking about needing their wisdom it just you know reminded me of this adage that what an elder would see you know exactly. sitting yeah. uh, you would see you know atop an Iroko tree. Iroko, yeah. uh, but let me just uh, take you up on this uh, before we run for a break. Um, this collaboration, do you see it happening moving forward? Do you see the, do you see the young people, you know, quote and unquote, like you said, you know, bowing or taking a knee before the young people, before the old ones to say, I want to drink from your fountain of knowledge? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, it's, an, it's an ongoing integration. And... Uh, the, the opportunity to join the, the wagon of the old people has always been open. Uh, but you all have to see the fact that the old people or the old generation keeps telling the young generation that they are not ready. And the young generation has not proven or done anything to show that they are ready to take over. Well, I think that's where now the quagmire lies. But let me just hold you there for a bit. We need to go on a quick break. And uh, when we return, of course, we'll still have with us our panelists right here in the Lagos studio as well as via Zoom to tell us more about what is going on at the moment in the country. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. We still have with us our panelists right here in the studio as well as via Zoom. But just before we went on break, um, Abraham was giving us um, a little sneak peek into why we are where we are, especially, you know, 
why the young people are not being given a seat at a table. So you talked about the young people not proving the unreasonable doubt that they have, you know, or they are ready, you know, to take over, and then the the older generation believing that the young people are not ready. So if you have these, so to speak, now dead ends, how do you galvanize? How do you move past these dead ends that we have at the moment? There, there, there has to be a sort of rallying. There, there needs to be someone who needs to rally the young people to demand, make demands from the old people. What we have right now is still young people being stooges to the establishment. I think they've done some form of demand through the Not Too Young to Wrong uh, movement. Nobody's listening. We are talking about making demands mm -hmm. from within, not making demands from outside. Mm. Every political party has a youth leader. Mm. What demands does the youth leader make? The youth leader is there for services that are not related to occupying yeah. positions. It is services of uh, standing as thugs or acting as security. No. The young people are ready to become governors. The young people are ready to become secretary, secret, sec, uh, secretaries of parties. The young people are ready to become chairman of political parties. But nobody's making any demands. That is why you find the old people saying they're not ready. You saw one of the candidates, I will not mention his name, of the, of the, one of the aspirants of one political party saying that he's not stopping anybody. He's not stopping young people from contesting. Mm. <laughs> he's not stopping them. Why? What is stopping you from, okay, you are a, a uh, what's it called, a, an, an organization of young people. Bring somebody forward, let him buy a form. Nobody's <laughs> going to stop you from buying a form. And put yourself forward. Or contribute if the money is too much. Yeah, the money cannot be too much. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we always talk about how elections are pretty much very expensive and the young people might not be able to afford. So maybe crowd, uh, crowdfunding There are be... young people doing so well. We are professionals. See, let, me, let, me, let me shock you. So one, one, one of the political parties, a, 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 a candidate or an aspirant who just declared to contest for the position of the president of Nigeria, it was young people that gathered mm -hmm. themselves and, mm -hmm. yeah. and declared that we're going to buy mm -hmm. form for you. Yes. Well, it's good we're having this, so it's yeah. good you're making demands, you know, already. But let me quickly get on to Michael. Uh, Michael has been, uh, you know, standing by. Michael, we're, we're looking at the the ability, you know, the readiness, the, the, the competitiveness of young people, you know, in the political space, uh, of course. Um, but in your own estimation, how would you, where would you rate young people? How would you say they're doing and how ready would you say they are, you know, to put themselves forward when the time comes? I think... Um Currently, young people in Nigeria, they are ready to take over power. But what is just left for us to do is to, to not be political fans. Because most of the time, if you look at this, most of uh, the young people in Nigeria are political fans. They don't have really, not necessarily godfathers, but someone who you can see as mentor, who is like upholding you or bringing you up in the system. So if you don't have that, you will end up being a social media warrior or something like that. And if you look at it basically, uh, truthfully, most of the most young people are the ones running these uh, campaigns for all these politicians, be it their research, be it their social media, be it their, even the real media. They are the, it is young people that you find in the back scene, why the old men are the ones doing the talking on TV and doing the one on the uh, stage on the other day. Meanwhile, it's the young ones who are doing the real work. So I think it's now time for the young ones to say, okay, when we are, when uh, this maybe political parties or candidates are setting up their team, let's make it happen. Have a balance 50 50, 50 young, 50 uh, old people. Then that, that way we would have enough participation. And also, it's time for young people to join the parties. You can't say you want to change the system from uh, Twitter, or from Facebook, or from the outside. You just have to be a member of a party, either PDP, APC, or any other party. You just have to be a member. And by, by being a member, it's not by being a member and staying in Abuja. You have to put your word. But that's where you, you will be known for your word, for local government, then state. If you are not known in those three places, you can't even get positions. So you have to just make sure that you are very, very popular in your constituency, in your local government, in your um, federal constituency, in your state. Uh, you, you attend meetings. So that's major ways to get known in this um, political system. So for me, uh, it has to be a change. We saw what happened during the uh, APC rally where you, the judicial leader was some of the that we were forced to step down. I, for, for, I, for one, I would have loved for, for uh, especially the youth um, leader, leadership position to go to, 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 to go to the pools, let the young people test their strengths. Let, let's see who, who is popular, who is popular. That way, we, they, they are giving the, the APC a, 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 an opportunity to see, oh, we are, we, are, we are truly, truly building the young parties. And, and but as, as, as usually, they came up with the 
the, the candidate that was picked by some of the leaders. So it's time to, to change that orientation. All right. So, um, I mean, uh, you know, going by this uh, last statement you made, um, uh, some people say that um, uh, in some instances, if not most, the young people are even the architects of their failure because um, they orchestrate, you know, some kind of things or some, they orchestrate the failure of other young people. So you, you, you find out that some young person here is trying to frustrate the effort of some young person, some other place who is trying to climb the ladder. Um, how do you resolve such um uh, you know issues well that's life it's easy. you can't resolve that everybody wants to butter his our own bread so why you say oh if i let this person climb up i'll be left behind so i think that, that's just basically life it's life our life is but i think that's also how to stop young people that's to come together and more like oh we cannot fight we cannot win these people by coming as a divided house we have to be united so i think it's just basically left to the young young man young uh, politicians let me that young politicians to come together as one and not see it as, oh, if Mr. A is to get the position, I am Mr. B will be left behind. You know, of course, once Mr. A gets there, he's going to find a way of bringing Mr. B up. So I think that's what it should be. I'm sure that's how it is in families. When it's not better, it becomes uh, maybe particularly rich, you try to bring up the younger one. So that's how it should be. Then uh, the should look at it also that, oh, once Mr. A gets the position, I also be on the lookout for. So it's a, uh, it's uh, it's not what that, that, that can be solved in maybe on the round table. It has to be continuous engagement with uh, the young people, and that's let maybe civil organization needs to keep talking to um, the young ones from secondary school level to university, not necessarily leaving it to the ones out, 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 outside now. We need to start from secondary school to university also. So let's let them do that. It has to be part of politics. Also. I mean, you're thinking out of secondary school by maybe 15, 16. You should know what the government is all about. You should be able to know, oh, my life depends on government decisions and all, so it should be part of all our daily activities. Well, you're, you're advocating for a really deep-rooted um, solution to uh, what seems to be the problem at the moment. Uh, hopefully, uh, that will be followed through, and hopefully that um, unity amongst young people would be formed in the nearest future, and of course, they would support themselves when the time comes and when the needs be. But I have to say thank you uh, for joining us uh, today on the program. Uh, Michael Abimboy, Senior Editor at um, Oprah News Nigeria. Thank you very much, Victor. Of, of course, you're welcome. Um, Isaac, close the, 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 this conversation for us. The indivisibility of young people. You know, how do how do you cement it? Now, it still comes back to us, the youth, because and uh, what is uh, the bane of the youth right now, especially in Nigeria, we're having the massive exodus of uh, our talents, talents and our resources now, which is the most proponent part of whatever it is you're going to do, you need the human resources. You need those brains to come and make the demands, like Abraham was rightly saying. But the mindset in the young also have to change, because at the end of the day, we have a lot of disenfranchisement, because a lot of the youth just feel like, why am I even going to vote in the first place? A lot of youth in Nigeria, a large chunk, have never casted a vote before, because of the mindset of, they will still vote or put whoever they want there. Why is it not you? Now, we fail to understand that you like it or not, the person that is getting into that office, you vote for him or not, determines even the quality of air you breathe. He determines the quality of water you drink. He determines that job you're saying you are not going to leave to go and cast a vote. So at the end of the day, you said you're not going to vote, but then you, they vote in, in quotes, you did not vote, but they vote in someone that couldn't sustain a policy that will keep your job. What have you done to yourself? So we need, first of all, a mind reawakening, it, if it's a refresher course, we need to start all over. It's beautiful. Yeah, you said we shouldn't go kid as a university <laughs> curriculum. I, I won't mind if they even started from the primary schools. Because you like it or not, the person you're voting into office, you, you, whatever capacity he is or whoever personality he presents determines the quality of life you will have. It's a universal fact. Now, why don't you look for, or why don't you present yourself, you think you can do the job, fine, get mentorship, because in everywhere, if you're being hired today for any job, you need to be trained to know the, at least, the basics. The house style. Yes. Then the intricacies is, over time, you learn those things, but you have to start from somewhere. And you can't ignore what obviously will come back and face you yeah. in reality. So what we're seeing right now is a result of someone not voting or someone voting. Why don't we change the narrative in 2023?
well, a time will tell, and hopefully that narrative will be changed. But I have to say thank you, you know, for joining us thank on the program, Isaac Abraham, as well as Abraham Mesri Jigu. Thanks to both of you, as well as Michael Abimboy for joining us on the program and sharing your thoughts on this um, fast approaching elections. <laughs> Thanks again. <laughs> it's really fast approaching. Indeed. Right? <laughs> well, that's where we are. We'll now take a look at the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. Thank you for watching. I'm Victor Mathias. Minister of Aviation, Rotimi Amechi, kicks off this week's most viewed videos after he denies seeing campaign banners of his presidential campaign. I have not seen the banners you are seeing. I hope you are not seeing this brief What about the support groups? Have you heard about the support that's groups? I, I, asked you that. I hope you are not seeing this brief rally. In fourth is a video of newly commissioned airport terminal in Lagos. Up next is the rescue of 11 kidnapped victims, including a military officer in Edo State. We have uh, 10 civilians all from Cross River, except for the army officer who is from major states, all traveling from Ogoja to uh, Lagos. They are all rescued and will soon be taken to uh, police cottage hospital for medical examination. Second spot sees the reaction of presidential aspirant Peter Obi to the declaration of the numero uno position in the country by former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. I am standing for the post of President of Nigeria. While the parade of a BRT driver for allegedly raping and murdering a passenger tops this week's charts. We want to assure the public and the deeply bereaved family of the victim that justice will be served in this case.